could tell Nefaru about it. Let's do it. It's gossip. He loves some hot goss. I feel like, among other things, like, I feel like you start off biased against Nefaru in this game because, one, he's, like, paying extra attention to you when you're in the middle of your era of, like, desperately trying to hide who you are and so on. Mm -hmm. So his attention is, like, off-putting and distressing and feels dangerous. And then he sleeps with your boy. But, like, the whole time there's the background hum of the fact that his name just sounds, like, nefarious. Oh, for sure. <laughs> like, he sounds like what you well, call the bad guy yeah, in a but, thing, I, I Neferu. Think I think it's more like Nefertiti. Yeah, like, I'm, it's, I think it's an authenticish name, but, like, it's you can still pick the uh, the name that sounds like another word and it colors how you think of like the character. Like, Amicus. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Amicable. Exactly. The two most prominent characters in at, at Astra are named Amicus and Neferu, which both have in, inherent implication because of how much they sound like other words in our language, even if they both are also names. And, like, you do that on purpose. Like, when you name someone Mal... Which just means bad. <laughs> I've never, are there people named Mal? Uh, I, I've seen a few different characters named Mal and stuff. Funnily enough, I think the pilot in Firefly is named Mal, and he's like the most beloved, like, cuddly character in the whole show. Well, there's a lot of characters named, like, Lucian, or like, Lucifer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, well, yep. that's why I'm the nose. <laughs> or like, a, like, Judith. Yeah. Or Judas, you know. And like, honestly, I really like, <laughs> I really like those names. And the name Nefer Neferu would still fit oh, Nefarious Dam Damien. because we found out he was scheming all along with the, with the sister. Yeah, but it helps. It's on our side. Yeah, exactly. So it's okay. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, Damien from The Omen was always my favorite one because I'm like, obviously his name's just Demon, guys. Yeah, like, you named him the thing that he is. <laughs> like, of course he's evil, <laughs> you guys. His name's fucking Damien. <laughs> yeah. No, it's... it's, it's... <laughs> I'll never be over the fact that in fucking Harry Potter, and like he's like my favorite character, but I'll never be over the fact that the guy who turns out to be a werewolf is named Lupin. Yeah, no his, name, his name is Remus Lupin, which is like Wolf Wolf. Speaking, Malfoy, <laughs> speaking of Mal, by the way. Yes, exactly. Draco Malfoy. Dra Dragon, Dragon Bad, Bad. Boy. <laughs> Draco Malfoy, more like Dragon Bad Boy, am I right, girls? Ew, ew. Dude, every now and then I'm like, like, do I need to be more creative with how I do things and how I name things and whatnot. And then I see like what stuff's actually called and I'm like, maybe you don't have to be actually. Maybe you can just be dumb about the whole thing. Who cares? I've named my dog Spot. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like in a... B -b 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 in World of War... I, I, I rally against this a lot, but it's just always funny to me. World of Warcraft is a really goofy universe to begin with. Like, it's just too self-serious and so on. But, like, there's a guy who's named Malfurion Stormrage. Fuck yeah. Like, his name is Bad, sick as hell. Angry, Storm Angry. <laughs> or, like, a... Like, you know, people Malfurion. Will, will be sitting there, like... Like, I take forever to name things, so I put a lot of effort. I actually... I haven't been able to name my car, which is dumb that I'm even naming my car anyway, but it's important. Yeah. I named my car and I've been like stuck on that for like a month but it's like I've I'll, never I'll named have, a car oh, I, I, I just always do I think it's good luck um but like I like all my names are like references to things and like <laughs> my my snake is named Beatrix Kiddo which is to me the <laughs> best name ever because she's black and yellow like like the outfit in Kill Bill but it's yeah. hella funny because she's a snake and I'm naming her after the person because in that movie all the people are named after snakes yeah. and I thought I was like dude that's fucking hilarious it's like a recursive reference nobody thinks it's as funny as I do <laughs> but I love it I think it's great but like that kind of stuff but then but at the same time people you are just like just whistle her her uh, her lullaby at her twisted nerve <laughs> <laughs> it, I was gonna say it would kind of suit her intense glare so <laughs> But, uh, and then meanwhile, people are just like, yeah, they're like, oh, I just feel like my baby's name's going to be, like, Tom. I just feel it. And Tom. I'm like, oh, you didn't, like, <laughs> I don't know, you didn't think about it at all. Yeah. Naming a kid's like a nightmare, dude. Just a gut reaction. Because, I mean, they're like, they're going to have that forever. And if you, they, you don't do it yep. right, they're going to resent you. I was almost a third instead of a new name. And that would have not been, I would not want to be called the third. I was almost Ruth because then my dad could call me Ruth. Baby Ruth and he thought that was really funny. Baby, that's a like, temporary joke. I know. <laughs> you age out of that. I know. <laughs> and then I'll have an old lady name before I'm even an old lady. <laughs> Ironically, an old lady name for your baby name. Yeah. Your baby <laughs> Baby joke. Ruth. Oh my God. The fair is in his room when I arrive, tapping away at what looks like a transparent tablet. 
It's an odd thing to see, considering the non-existence of portable technology in this palace. Maybe it's a Chemian thing. As soon as he sees me, though, the display slides back into the small metal bar that it had been, it had been projecting out of as he turns to face me. Hello, Marco. You were gone for quite a while. Uh, yeah. Care to share how your visit went with Cassius and hopefully Amicus? My three visits with Cassius? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is a long day. <laughs> and then also spying, I guess. It takes me a moment to remember exactly what he's talking about. Yeah, we've been about. through so much already. Yeah, he's talking about us getting, like, leaving with the sister, like, Virginia. That was so long Virginia ago. Virginia Wolf. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I did not even think of that. <laughs> it just registered in a sentence for me. I'm like, Oh my no. gosh. Who's afraid of oh, they're playing Virginia favorite, Wolf? They're playing my favorite song. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> yeah, and, and I was just thinking about all their names, and I was like, Virginia, though, that's just random. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Takes, after my little trip, everything that happened before, it seemed so distant. I try to tell Nefera as much as I remember involving Cassius before the parent thing, and he seems impressed. Hmm, I suppose bringing Cassius to our side won't be as difficult as I had previously thought. It seems he has similar misgivings about Kato. Yeah, and Amicus is doing okay, just a bit depressed about everything that's happening, obviously. I pause then, which Nefero notices. Is there something else that happened? I take a deep breath, thinking how best to describe what I went through. Well, when I was coming back... There was this weird smell coming from the meditation room. Nefera raises an eyebrow, and I go on to explain how I ran into Cassius again, then everything that happened afterwards. When I finish, the jackal's quiet, just watching me with a narrowed gaze. This is usually the look he gives me when he's thinking hard about something, so I give him some time to respond. That's his thinking hard face? Yeah. It is, it, he's, it's, it's, he's thinking hot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's just like, it seems like, a, like if you ask some, like, sexy models, just be like, okay, now I want you to do a face where you're thinking really hard. He's like, okay. <laughs> he's just doing, he doesn't seem authentic at all. <laughs> See, I got one eyebrow up and one eyebrow down, so it looks like I'm really, I'm like, hmm? The attitude I'm of this hmm? character. <laughs> when he does, I'm hesitant and reserved. It's hesitant and reserved. Not usually something I hear from Neferu. So it was a drug-induced hallucination, yes? Well, I guess so. But I think it was real, too. Like Cassius was there, and he remembers seeing me with him. Hmm. What's wrong? Well, that is a very primitive way to contact the parents. To, to put it bluntly, it does not work. It was a method used in the early days during first contact between sibling and parent. They visited multiple times, and in between visits, some siblings, especially the wolves, would try to contact them again via psychotropic drug use. This could occasionally bring visions of higher beings, though they were not the parents, of course. Simply imagine beings conjured up by a chemically imbalanced brain. Hmm. So we're re-questioning again whether or not any of this even happened. Well, but the thing is, we, we keep seeing this... Like, we've done this a few times, and this is our first time doing it while on drugs. I mean, granted, one of those times was when we were, like, so sick that we were losing our minds. Yeah. But the other times before was just, like, during sleeping. Which, I mean, you also could argue, like, dreams don't necessarily mean reality. But we've been having a consistent, repeating vision of the same things. Yeah. So. It was actually funny to me when you'd bring up DMT in the past because of the fact that it, it does, like, several parts of that asteroid where that comes up. <laughs> Both the part where you're like you're kind of dying and you relive your whole life in in, the, in a way, and then they basically take what he refers to as DMT again. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, this is likely what you experience. To truly contact the parents, you must do it through parental tech, complicated machinery that is able to transcend dimensions. It is usually only usable by a single person, such as the emperor for the wolves or the pharaoh for my people. The pharaoh stops talking at this point, allowing me to take all that information in. So maybe I'd imagined it at all, even if it had seemed so real. They told me they had a plan for me and everything, 
Sure they did, sweetheart. Aww. Oftentimes, such drugs stroke the ego of the user. They make you feel as if you are the center of the universe. As if you are important. Not saying that you aren't. Aww. Aww but also, they did the opposite of that for Cassius, because they told him <laughs> they that he's a fraud. Because so one way or another, he, he has some version of that, because it seems confirmed by his, his am I a fraud comment. Well, and, and I do think, like, him having... Being on the same trip as you is not... That's not normal, really, either. Yeah. So, I mean, that kind of that kind of makes me think it's more true. It raises the question of, like, it's ineffective at forcing a connection with the parents, maybe, but maybe they could still just hijack it if they want to. Like, oh, this brain's vulnerable. Did yeah. You... Have you tried it before? I've had brushes with such substances in my youth. That face. <laughs> Good for experiencing the fragility of reality and how we perceive it, but little else. Aww. I see. Still, it sounds like you caught Cassius in a moment of vulnerability. He could trust you more because of it, if you treated the situation delicately. We didn't really. <laughs> we kind of uh, fucked up. Maybe. I think back to when I saw him crying in front of the statue, but I don't want to tell Nefera about that. I'm not really feeling it would be all that useful or appropriate to share. Although it might confirm that everything you said was real. But this reminds me of what else the parents have said to me. Well, they also told me something else. To watch Alex. Did they now? Yeah. And I did. He's been acting weird ever since I got here, so I spied on him today. And he sailed off to the island in the middle of the lake just now. nefer has got a strange, knowing smile on his face. What? I just find it interesting that you have similar suspicions of Alex that I did. What do you mean? I've been studying the cat myself and noticed a few odd things as well, including his trips to the island. I frown. <laughs> so Nefru's like, I'm way ahead of you. Yeah. But he, but he's interpreting this as basically being like the uh, the DMT like surfaced our our suspicions that we've harbored but haven't been acting on about Alex, basically. I mean, it could make you... Like, drugs will make you paranoid. So, yeah. maybe. Like, th that's pretty explainable, I guess. What? And you didn't tell me? Well, this rather d desperate situation we're in only came about very recently, and I had little use for this information until now. Well, what do you think he's doing? Nefaro shrugs. I don't know, as I've not yet followed him to the island. You can imagine that I'm planning to now that we could use Alex on our side as well. Turn everyone against Kato? Yes. So if he's doing something bad, then we would use it as blackmail? Essentially. He is the closest person to Cassius and could possibly grant us access to classified information. I sigh, growing weary of all of this backstabbing. If it's the only way to help Amicus, I guess. Oh, there are many ways, and I have a last resort plan in place. Which makes me think it'll come up. <laughs> Whenever anyone talks about anything, basically, yeah, it pretty much comes up. Like, imagine the awkwardness if Amicus made that whole precaution situation and then it never mattered. <laughs> Whoops! Just slept with the Chemian for funsies. <laughs> <laughs> I wait, but Nefera doesn't go on. Which is? Well, considering Amicus's birthright, he still has the ability to challenge whoever's on the throne, but... Really? All this time, Amicus could have just challenged Cassius again? Then I realize that Nefera's about to go on. Yeah, that's what happens when you interrupt people. <laughs> but what? <laughs> A fight to the death, since the wolves love their violence, though the Emperor would have to accept the challenge. The thought of that instantly makes me feel sick. Why would an emperor ever accept a challenge? Yeah. I mean, I mean granted, I understand it's like, it makes him look kind of like... Because he looked like a coward. Yeah. But the Which same is what time, he constantly is on the verge of looking like. I mean, Cassius really is in a position, I think, to fairly just not accept that option. And nobody, I think, really would blame him considering his health. Like, <laughs> Depends on whether or not the wolves care about that kind of thing. I mean, I feel like you should give a pass to somebody with like a, like a medical... Uh, like with a medical issue, yeah. but I mean, they probably think that even just having like a frail leader will make us look bad. I was gonna say it depends on how the wolves feel about like ableism and whatnot. Like the uh, like, is it an FDR situation? I was just thinking that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> FDR. I like. I do think it's touching that he 
Like, it's one of those things that makes it's like, it's like, oh, it makes me sad. I think about him trying to fake not having polio. Yeah. And, like, holding himself up on, like, the sand to give his speeches because he didn't want to come off as weak because he thought, the, like, it would make our country look bad. Yeah, wouldn't his brothers or something, like, hold him up? Well, I, th I think he, it got to, I think it, I'm not entirely sure, but I know he, uh, he was able to hold himself up for a while, then he kind of couldn't, and then he had to, like, use other methods to come off as if he was okay, but he just was, like, he was getting worse, I think. Hmm. So. No. No way. Again, last resort. I doubt Amicus would challenge his own brother, and I doubt Cassius would accept. At least at the moment. I can't even begin to contemplate a situation like that. An affair quickly changes the subject. Anyway, I should be off. I'd like to catch Alex in the act, and based on previous observations I've made, I have another hour to do so. I blink in surprise. Right now? Shouldn't we wait until, like, tomorrow night? He only goes once a week. Considering how urgent our situation is, I should get this done now. Can I go too? Marco, remember what I said about needing to keep you safe? Yeah, and it's Alex. What's he gonna do? <laughs> we should be prepared for anything. Katie's got claws. <laughs> well, I think it's better if we both go, in case something does happen and you need my help. Like, what help will you be? <laughs> We did help last time, but I don't know. I don't know how much help we actually are. I think we're I mean, kind of a liability. We, last time we defeated him with a bath. Well, <laughs> well that, that is true. That is true. I, I was thinking about the, the Kato fight where we like... Yeah, no, I just mean I just mean Alexios. No, I, I'm not afraid of Alexios. I just think that maybe there's more There's more going on. I'm not afraid of Alexios himself. Yeah. <laughs> he, he in and of himself is not scary in any way. And Pharaoh lets out a soft sigh. All right. I'm surprised by how quickly he gives Sad in. Sad puppy face. I suppose you deserve to be treated as an equal in these plans we're making. Though, if Amicus finds out I'm bringing you on these missions, he'll have my hide. I'll let him know I wanted to be part of it. Hmm. As if that will convince him. Anyways, let's be off. Okay. My excitement picks up as I get to my feet and follow Nefero to the door. If we run into anyone, especially Kato, we simply tell them we're out for an evening stroll, understood? Yep. Despite the potentially dangerous situation we're going into, my mood is lifted knowing that things are finally moving again. I didn't realize that that lake was like a part of the palace still, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I guess it makes sense to be- no, wait. I thought- Like the question of like, exactly where do I get exterminated if I cross a line? Yeah, exactly. And, but then I, th I thought, like, it wasn't part of the palace, because wasn't it, like, when, when we were late that one day, we were playing on the beach? It is off the network, yeah. It's off the network, yeah, because they couldn't tell us. We're out of the range of the drones. Yeah. I wonder if the uh, the sightseer is, like, pre-programmed to just go back and forth like a monorail, and so there's no way, other way to leave, really. Well, Wait. as I was wondering that, too, like, how the fuck are we going to get over there? But there is the question of, this does open the question of, like, can Marco just swim away? <laughs> I mean... Where would, he, where would he go? Just swim, swim to another yeah. coast, like, out of the... Maybe Kato didn't think this through because he thinks we'd drown. <laughs> oh, oh, yo, that'd be, that'd be kind of funny. <laughs> if that's, like, a another, like, self-terminating plot. I've got you. It's You're like, surrounded completely by water. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it sounds like a plot hole, but it's actually just another misunderstanding that you can explain. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, there's another sightseer craft in the gazebo, though it looks much older, and the floor on this one isn't transparent. Which I'm fine with. I'd rather not gaze into the inky blackness of the water beneath my feet while I'm sailing to the island. Nefaru is quiet most of the time, looking confident in everything he does as he prepares the craft. Finally, he reaches out his paw and chivalrously pulls me on board. The lake laps quietly around us as we approach the island, a black mass amongst the ripples of reflected moonlight in the waves. I immediately spot Alex's craft uh, sitting on the beach near where we had our picnic all those weeks ago. We travel a little further up the shore, out of sight of the craft before we drift onto the beach. Nefero holds out a paw again to help me down, even though I don't need it. As I settle on the sand, though, he leans in close to whisper in my ear. Wait here. Unfortunately, I believe simian footfalls are louder than that of a jackal. Yeah, because we're like clumsy oafs. But it's a 
beach. <laughs> also, you probably weigh two to three times as much as me. <laughs> like, I imagine Marco weighs like 170, like 180. And this guy is probably seven feet tall and like widescreen. <laughs> like, how much fu- How much does he fucking weigh? A car? <laughs> well, he turns towards us to show us his, his nice titties. <laughs> he, uh, he does seem like pretty built. Yeah. He's like, a thick boy. It's like, I think Simeon footfalls are heavier than a 500 foot, a 500 pound jackal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but call me if something happens or you need help. I see a smile on Nefera's face, and though it's amused, it's not in a condescending way at all. Of course, my friend. I always forget the lore here. Pro- probably because I don't care very much. But <laughs> we're like on a moon? Uh-huh. And the sky has two moons, or something. They, they explained that, like, er- early on. I forget. <laughs> like, I forgot how it worked already. Uh, yeah. Because, because it's, it's one of those, like, oh, yeah, ba- like basic sci-fi. Of course, there's always, like, two moons or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, but whatever. does this moon have two moons? Or is one of those actually the planet? I do one of its moons? wonder how this affects the tide. That is, like, that is when, if you have multiple moons, yeah. how does that work for the tide? And also, how does it work for nighttime? Because if it's, like, the moon is, like, re- like reflecting the sun's what? light, and that's why we have nighttime light. Did Ad Astra have an ocean? We only saw Ad Astra for a moment, I think, as we were landing on it. Yeah. If it even showed us. I don't remember what it looked like. Like if it was ocean y to begin with, or what. I don't know. Space is weird, and I don't even understand how it works in real life, let alone uh, furry sci fi made up rules land. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like if I if I put my hands out and somebody puts on like all this information, it's one. It's, I'm not going to. There are certain things I can juggle and I can manage. Things about space, I just I will just drop the tray of information because it's like just I'm not going to get any of this. I'm not going to even I'm not going to even try to I'm not going to try to give my brain space to this because mm-hmm. I will not retain it. I will not use at this. all. So I'm I'm just going to like use that space for some other stuff, <laughs> and I'm going to leave all this to people <laughs> who are scientists on it. And when they explain something to me, I will trust that they are. Uh, they know what the fuck they're talking about. Well, then, then and I'll some, just say, okay. Well, then something you would care more about, then. I do wonder if the, how much they can get away with, with with color correction and how much they just have to repaint these when they change the time of day. Oh, in terms of, like, the just the art? Yeah, we have multiple we have multiple scenes now where there's multiple times of day, and that, that interests me. Like, I, I feel like you could just color correct Amicus's room. Oh, yeah. But, like, the outside garden with the glowing windows... Has like I think three times of day that scene. There, there, there's there's like you just have the picture. There's like effects you can put on it. It's not. I I, I feel like there's a no. Granted, this is another thing I'll drop the tray on because <laughs> I, uh, technology is generally something I know yeah. very little about. You want know, to talk to me about like you know bugs or something? You know, talk to me about uh, fish. You want know, to talk to me about um, art or movies or something? I'll hold all those things. But yeah, no uh, technology. Drop it right on the ground right out but i do know that there's a way in the fancy little art yeah tablets to just basically add glow to things to change color to put like a screen on it like like i know they, they could fix that really yeah easy, i know I I, like I, I do a lot of thumbnail stuff in gimp so like i know there's a lot of like there's a lot of color correction you can do and there's like you can use masking to also like change part of the image in an automated way but then repaint another part of it yourself or so on and uh I just, I can't tell which one they're doing in some of these scenes or how much they're doing of them and so on. They do have the, the uh, they did have to draw the silhouettes, uh, the reflections of the moons. And also the moons, I guess. <laughs> and with that, the jackal disappears into the night, leaving me with only the little craft and the gentle sound of the waves to keep me company. I don't have to wait long before I hear voices coming from further up the beach, and I know right away that it's Neferu and Alex. I wait for a few moments to see if Neferu will call my name. When he doesn't, I frown and look around before quietly making my way toward the voices. It's not like I expect he needs help, but I don't want to miss anything important, and I feel like the moment of confrontation with Alex should involve me. Yeah, you're leaving us out. As I get closer, I'm able to make out the, the words, and I see that the two of them are right on the edge of the woods, standing just a few feet apart. 
Nefera's excuse wasn't very good, was it? The whole weight thing, as I pointed out already. He probably should have been like, if he bolts, you can cover, you can guard the craft yeah. to catch him, which would make more sense. There's no way he's quieter. <laughs> he's so huge. Maybe just, he and thinks, we're on a beach. He just thinks we're tactless, maybe. <laughs> Just, just yeah. We're just, we're just a big dumb baby that's not how to do you're anything. You're gonna embarrass me. Like, yeah, you're gonna step on a twig like they always do. In the, the one twig in the entire forest. You know, when we're running away, you're gonna, you're gonna be the one girl that trips. Like, <laughs> ah, ah. The heels I suddenly wear. <laughs> I crouch and hide along the tree line as I listen more closely to what they're saying. Beautiful night. I've always wanted to come to the island to gaze at the moon and planet away from the lights of the palace. There you go. It's the moon and the planet. Oh, I see. It is incredibly beautiful here, isn't it? While he's speaking in his typical, pleasant tone, I can definitely tell that Alex seems a bit nervous, his voice tight and a bit out of breath. So... Yes? Alex looks around nervously. I heard you speaking just before I happened upon you. Is there someone else with you? Me? Oh, no, definitely not. You know, it's rather embarrassing, but sometimes I just talk to myself. Heh <laughs> sure. Don't be embarrassed. It's something I do as well. Uh, oh, I see. Alex seems to be relaxing a bit under Neferu's treatment, but tenses up again at the next sentence. Though I usually don't whisper to trees. Now that is a bit odd. <laughs> I see Alex's ears flatten, though I'm a bit confused at the statement. Whispering to trees? I... I... Alex doesn't seem to have an answer ready, and stutters in the most gu guilty way imaginable. Weirdly enough, though, he sidles up closer to Neferu. Neferu, you're, you're the one that's acting a bit odd right now, you know. The small cat's demeanor oh. suddenly changes to a more sultry approach, relaxing his shoulders and drifting a paw down his body. It doesn't seem natural at all, though, unlike Neferu's smile as he stares down at the approaching cat. He is still smiling when Alex reaches up to cup his cheeks and kiss him right on the lips. Oh, cheater. I blink, surprised at the sudden turn the scenario has taken. Nefaro looks anything but surprised, though. <laughs> Everyone wants to kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> Grinning throughout the kiss as Alex tries to kiss deeper. Finally, the cat seems to notice the lack of response from the jackal and draws back, frowning. And how many times have you done that, Alex? <laughs> That's a gosh. <laughs> there's the there's the stony face. It's it's so embarrassing. He didn't get his way. To think like if I'm just thinking if I tried to like seduce someone and they didn't give me anything, I'd be so pissed. Yeah. <laughs> like that that is like a huge diss. He's doing the oh officer what oh, ha what what's happening oh, no. today? <laughs> I just, I wonder left my if, wallet at home. I wonder if we can work something out. <laughs> yeah, dude, and, then, and when you get turned down from that, it's like, not only, not only is it, like, transparent that you're just, like, a, like you're just a little hoe. Like, yeah. you know, like, you're, uh, you're basically just manipulative, but then also, like, you, you weren't, you didn't pass the desire check, and that just makes you feel fucking terrible. Yeah. Like, it's a double diss. It also makes you wonder if they've already, they've already been there. If he's going there suddenly, no, I uh, maybe because the fair did not seem surprised. I just like he'd be very convincing. Yeah, I think the fair <laughs> just fucking just knows everyone. He just will, expects it. He was like, I, I just, I just, I'm not. <laughs> I just expect everyone to want to mac on yeah, me. Yeah, I know. I walk around in underwear the entire game, <laughs> just just underwear and like a bracelet, and that's it. <laughs> that's clothing. <laughs> hey man, he knows he looks good. <laughs> the fair shakes his head. Oh, Alex, you know that's my technique. It will not work on me. Now, why don't we have a look at that tree? <laughs> Alex freezes up, looking around, and that's when I think he spots me. Uh, who, who's that? Nefera turns his head just slightly in my direction, uh -oh. and that's when Alex makes his move. He sends a kick sailing between the jackal's legs. Everyone's first reaction <laughs> is to go for that. Why is poor, poor Nefera's... Like, yeah. balls, man. And just as I'm ready, readying myself to intervene, Nefaru's paw is there, solidly stopping the attack. He's learned from last time. <laughs> I know this. I know not foo. There's a pause, Nefaru holding Alex's leg, forcing him to balance on one foot as the jackal's smile turns smug. Well, now he's caught him. Now he can't get away at all. That's my purse. I don't know you. 
That's my purse. I, I don't, don't know, know you. you. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the part at the end where he tries to do it to uh, his mom, love- and his mom's like, that's not gonna work on me. And then she grabs his foot, and like, it's exactly what happens. I just love Bobby's voice so much. That's my purse, I don't know you. Half the entertainment of that show is everyone, that is like the best series of voices of like any sitcom cartoon. Oh my gosh, they have like- Tom Petty on there. <laughs> and Brittany Murphy. But uh, fucking... Uh, I need to watch that show from the beginning sometime. Oh, I, oh, I love that show. Back so when much. I first saw it, it was when I was like, I was like too young, so it was like the boring one of the, like the family sitcom cartoons because it's like restrained by comparison. I always liked it because I felt like the character, like there's something comforting about it to me because like the characters are all just like it reminds me of my white ass family, <laughs> but, but then also like it just there's like a, a comfort in the the charm of the characters and yeah. like their interactions with each other. But there's a I've been. I don't. I, I don't remember the YouTube channel, so I'm. I'm doing a disservice. But there's this one YouTuber that does like. Uh, he he analyzes all the characters and their power levels, like as if he's doing a review of an anime. Yeah. Where he like goes through every season. He talks about like the like. It's like oh like, in this episode like Dale reveals that he's able to smoke this many packs of cigarettes in a day, making his power level like a little bit higher because he's obviously <laughs> able to withstand like toxins, and like like he like he's a- analyzes like each character and evaluates like what their power level is, and Bills is like, he's got like the power of like depression because <laughs> he's like really depressed. No. Uh, but it, it makes him like with able to withstand anything. Like I don't know. He, it's it's very very funny. I recommend it if you like the show. Yeah. But I definitely I fucking love King. Well, Nefaru has has leveled his defense stat by being repeatedly kicked in the nuts until he was lifted off the ground. Oh yeah. I just imagine Peggy <laughs> Hill. Uh, Peggy Hill. It's not a good time. What a pity you're not. <laughs> what a pity that you're not the first to try to try such a move on me. I've learned people on this moon fight dirty. <laughs> yeah, like never has been through too much. It just won't much. stop happening. Everyone's kicking me in the nuts. <laughs> they're either trying to feel my nuts or they're trying to kick me in yeah. the nuts. Alex squeaks but balls up a fist anyway, sending a straight punch square into Nefaru's stomach. Unfortunately, <laughs> no one's straight on this moon. It connects with a hollow thud, bouncing off the jackal's abs like they're made of bricks. <laughs> Neferu only grunting slightly in response. Whew. No, that's a bit more like it. Suddenly, Neferu uses a leg to sweep Alex's only foot off the ground, sending the cat onto his back in the sand. Neferu follows him down, pinning the cat there, almost engulfing Alex with his much bigger body. Ah! Get off me! Help! (laughs) Alex spots me as I come out into the open, standing next to the two of them. Marco, help me! The jackal's gone mad! I fold my arms and stand over him, and Alex quickly realizes that I'm definitely not here to help him. (laughs) What are you two doing? I told you I know nothing, Marco. Why must you keep attacking me like this? (laughs) This That's the first time we've seen this face, I think. Uh, maybe. This is his most desperate moment so far, I think. But it's also, he's continually fucking, like, gaslighting us that we're the uh, constant aggressor that's making, that's doing stuff to him for no reason. Like, he's, he's resurfacing the same approach he, t- he took before, because he has, he has his own strategy of how to manipulate each person. And he's just pulling them all out now. Yeah, he's definitely capable of this kind of face. It's just not a face that he shows people. Yeah. Alex continues to struggle meekly under the jackal, not even looking like he's trying to escape. Attack you? Then why is it my stomach that is sore? Is it sore, though? Yeah. <laughs> Never. <laughs> like, I think you're probably fine. Why is everybody attacking me when I always do the first thing every time? Alex doesn't seem to be listening, and tears start brimming in his eyes and he, as he begins to sob. Now I'm fully convinced that his sobs in the, ba- the, in the bathing room were all an act. Marco... I turn my attention back to Neferu, who's still smiling as always. About ten paces directly in front of me is a large tree, larger than the others that surround it. Do you see it? I look ahead, and immediately see what Neferu is talking about. The tree noticeably larger than the others, its branches uh, stretching dozens of feet into the air, the leaves looking like silver in the moonlight. Yes. 
Go up to it, circle it, and see if you can find a hollow. I do as I'm told, feeling a little apprehensive as I step just inside the dark woods. Wait, Neferu, Marco, I don't understand. Why are you doing this? I understand at that moment how much I'm trusting Neferu here. I have no idea what's happening at all. The trunk of the tree is thick enough that I, I wouldn't be able to touch my hands if I were to hug it. Just like all the men on this moon. I start, <laughs> <laughs> I start looking for the, <laughs> the hollow that Farrah <laughs> described. And as I walk around the tree, I immediately spot one on the, other side of it, on the other side of it. I look into the black hole, feeling a bit nervous at what I might find in there. I found... I stop as a tiny red light in the hollow flares to life with my voice before fading again. What the? It happens again, pulsing to the sound of my voice. You found it? Yeah, and there's a little red light in there that's lighting up with my voice. I watch the hypnotic ebb and flow of the light as I speak. Thank you, Marco. You may come back now. Gratefully, I return to the side of my Kimian friend, noticing that Alex's demeanor has completely changed now. He's sullen, though almost expressionless as he lays under the jackal, not even pretending to, to be trying to escape at this point. Well, that settles it, doesn't it, Alex? Alex remains silent, staring at by the sky. What is it? Nefero looks up at me. Classic... Amorphan, <laughs> classic amorphan parent tech. They often combine plant life and machinery to create their gadgets. Rather ingenious, and they've recently been sharing their knowledge with us on Chemia. Yeah, the amorphans, the uh, harder to remember species name because it doesn't come up much because it's the cats. Oh yeah, yeah. What a what a mistake that was. Wait, but what is it? A communication device. It uses the branches as a massive antenna, capable of transmitting information great distances, though it's likely transmitting to Ad Astra City. There is likely a second spy there, who then beams the information through a much more powerful machine straight to Amorpha. Nefero grins in Alex's face. Isn't that right, Alex? Once again, Alex remains silent, seeming to have shut down. So, do you want to be the one to tell Cassius, Marco? That finally gets a reaction out of Alex, and he stiffens up, fur bristling out as he snarls at Neferu. And for what reason, Jackal? We're all spies here, including you, especially you. Oh, you have no idea what you're talking about, Alex. Neferu's tone says otherwise. Alex continues to glare up at the Jackal, his fur starting to lay flat again. Oh, you think I'm that stupid? You think I'd just let you fuck me without any regard to your intentions, without <laughs> studying you? I know why you're here, Jackal. <laughs> oh, they did fuck. <laughs> Nefer's just, like, getting <laughs> going around the... He's, like, checking one box at a time. Kat yep. Kato's elusive, though. <laughs> they don't like each nope. other. Nefer is a confirmed switch. Yeah. Uh, do enlighten me, Cat. You're floundering here, looking to make a name for yourself. The pharaoh practically tossed you off that planet to attempt to cultivate a hopeless alliance on Ad Astra. Nefero's eyes narrow. How unfulfilling it must be to be the second born, unable to escape the shadow of your brother. I don't know, he looked pretty filled earlier. <laughs> <On Ad> Astra... <laughs> oh goodness, Keith. <laughs> Unab uh, unable to make father <laughs> proud as you thinking of him being f fucking <laughs> I'm sorry did I ruin your line <laughs> uh, st stuck on this moon getting your balls kicked by the bigot wolves Alex sounds and looks almost unrecognizable even your sisters the third and fourth born have secured positions of greater prestige than you I see Nefero grip tighter into Alex, but the cat goes on. In an era where the royal family has already given up so much power, you're desperate behind that facade of confidence, terrified of withering away into historical insignificance. You'll be less than a footnote in Kimian history books. Nefero isn't smiling anymore, and I can tell that he's been caught off guard just as much as me by the cat's complete change in character. Still, he keeps his hold on the cat, remarking coolly. I would choose my words more carefully if I were you, considering your position right now. 
As I was saying, we'll be reporting this to the Emperor as soon as we return to the palace. Alex seems to deflate again, apparently satisfied with the hits he'd gotten in on the jackal. What do you want? Hmm? Don't play stupid. What do you want from me? You've known I was a spy since you first got here, and you're only doing this now because you want something. Oh, how considerate of you. Well... Nefaro looks up at me. What do you think we want, Marco? Full access to the archives. Alex snorts. I don't have that. Then get it. We know how close you are to Cassius. Make something up as to why you need it, then grant us access. For what reason? To help Amicus. Cassius will not be harmed by this. You have until next week, otherwise the Emperor will know of your treason. Alex remains quiet, and Nefera seems satisfied with that, pushing off the cat and getting to his feet. Let us be off. The jackal speaks briskly to me before turning on his heel and making his way back to the craft. I look down at Alex, watching as the cat simply stares at the moons, not even acknowledging me. The way back's a bit awkward. Nefero quiet, clearly upset. Aw. Mm. Poor boy. Mm.